Hello there, welcome to Bo Beats. My name is Bo, and today we're checking out this URAC sequencer here. It's called Dot, and it can do some really interesting polymetric stuff. I got two of them, and yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna start off by playing something here for you. Dot is the kind of URAC module that I really like. It's quite hands-on, it doesn't have a lot of menus, and it's also quite small. So we have the screen here, which shows small dots here, as you can see, which represent the 16 steps. And there are three different tracks. You select them by hitting any of the buttons. You also have this a little knob here which you can also click. Then we have CV inputs which can control various things and then we have clock input, we have our set, we have the outputs. So it's very straightforward. There are a couple of menus but nothing, yeah, nothing too complicated, nothing too deep. This is a pro and a, and a con depending on what you're after so it's not the deepest sequencer by any means. It can't do a ton of stuff, but it does what it's supposed to and it does it really well. So let's patch it up here. So first we need some kind of clock. Just gonna take an LFO here, I'll split it into the two different clocks. Then we're gonna trigger the black noir. And don't get annoyed here that I'm using buried ca cable lengths. It, it's, it's what I got to work with at the moment. A lot of stuff is, is packed up, uh, ready for, for the studio move. So we have it patched up. Next up, gonna take the output here. Gonna go out here. So the sequences are running in sync and it's very easy to create a little drum groove here. Just select the track, just turn the knob here. This groove is created using the Euclidean mode. So basically, if we have a green light here, we can just turn the knob here and you can see that we're just selecting a different pattern here. And these patterns are 16 steps, but with the CV inputs, we can also create some really interesting variations. Let me just, let me show you here. So now you can see that using some modulation, we're actually changing up the patterns here using the CV inputs, which makes the 16 steps a lot more than just 16 steps. So creating a drum groove is either by using one of these predetermined sequences here. So you can see me select one per track here. Or you can just push the knob and now you're in XOX mode. So this is more of a normal step sequencing mode. So let me show you here by creating a little hi-hat pattern. So now we're just... Yeah, 
normal hats going on. But we can also add one of these generated sequences on top of the manually placed triggers. Which is kind of cool, because we can then use some kind of CV manipulation here and modulate not the notes that I placed down manually, they are still there on the same steps as you can see, they're not changing, the red notes aren't changing, but we're changing up the, the green ones, basically the Euclidean rhythm. So that's from the Euclidean rhythm mode, and these rhythms can be manipulated and changed up. So let's see here, oh, this is a good point, there's also uh, just a normal recording mode, so let's see here, let's record some, uh, some snares. So we press this, no, wait, we hold this button here, to get into the, the normal menu mode. So here we have a record button. So these buttons here have different colors. So if we are in green, we're changing the Euclidean rhythm. If I instead go to red here, I'm changing the length of the pattern. A little thing to note here is that when you change the length of the pattern and you have a Euclidean rhythm, basically, let me show you here, we are playing the same amount of notes, but on a shorter pattern. So you see I'm changing the length of the pattern, but the amount of notes from that Euclidean rhythm that I've selected, it's the same. So spreading it out, shorting it down. And orange is offset. And all of this can be manipulated using CV, so we'll, we'll, I'll show you that later in the video as well. Something I would have loved to see, which isn't here, um, is some kind of yeah probability-based sequencing as well. Something like from the BitStep Pro or uh, the KeyStep Pro, for example, where you set up probability for certain notes or probability for the entire track to generate notes. Stuff like that could be cool. Sure, the, the CV inputs have similar functionality, but yeah, it would just have been very, very cool. Now in the main menu, that you access by holding down the knobs here, we actually have load and save, so we can save uh, patterns and load them. You can also actually change patterns via CV using some kind of modulation source, which is kind of cool. Um, then you can set uh, what the CV is actually doing, we'll get into that later. You can mute. We can also erase. So erasing is very simple, just double press. And now we can just record something over it. But there's also a secondary menu. And in this secondary menu, we actually have a very useful feature, which is the ratcheting. So it's over here. So now we have an additional kind of sequencer. So let me see if I can put something down here. So basically we've added a bunch of fills to certain steps. So here you can see we're selecting the different track that we want to edit and we just move the little cursor around to put down a fill trig. In the secondary menu you can also do things like set swing and you can also take a Euclidean rhythm and change it into an XOX style pattern which makes it easier. So if you have something that you've generated uh, and you just want to change out a few notes then you can do that as well from this secondary menu. Now let's go back to the CV inputs because you can change the settings for them. So basically hold this button here, 
CV menu and here we can actually toggle. So you can see here that the colors change. Green, red, orange. And the different colors, and we're just gonna read from the manual here so I don't mess it up. Green is for fill, red is for length, and yellow is for offset. So we could, for example, take the hi-hat pattern and we could set it to length. So the CV input here will impact the length. Let's do offset for this last one here. And for the kick, we'll just have fill and we'll have fill for, uh, for the snare as well. Using the CV input, we can not only add additional drum hits, we can also manipulate the offset as well as the length of the pattern, creating some interesting variations and again expanding on those 16 steps that are the limit for the sequencer, but in, in reality it's actually more than 16 steps. So what's my opinion of this little sequencer? Well, first off, it's quite hands-on, it's a lot of fun, it's very easy to get stuff going, very inspirational, it's not hard to use even though that the screen is quite small. So overall, I think it does a really good job. Uh, what I really enjoy with it is the CV inputs and the way you can change up a sequence. I think that's the whole, like, that's the, of course the whole point with it, with a Euclidean that's a tongue twister for me as a Swede. Euclidean, Euclidean sequencer. Um, so yeah, that's the whole point. I think it does it very well. It's very inspirational, easy to get going. But there are a few negatives. First off, uh, the colors here. If you're colorblind or have other problems with color, uh, this will be very hard to navigate. Same goes for the screen. It's very much reliant on you being able to accurately see color. It might not be the most accessible sequencer depending on your eyesight. Um, depending on if you have any issues with yeah, color and stuff like that. But other than that, I do think it's a very interesting little sequencer. Uh, I have had a, a lot of fun with it actually. There are more advanced sequencers out there, but for the small form factor and just kind of the hands-on playability, you know that's a big thing. It's something I say a lot, but for me, having it in this kind of small form factor, Eurac case, just being able to kind of plug and play very quick, very easy to, to do things, to create interesting rhythms. Um, yeah, I think it gets the job done. It's a lot of fun. So that's my kind of my verdict. This is probably one of the last videos that I'll be recording here in the old studio, in the home studio. Because if you haven't seen the news, I'm moving out of this studio into a, another office space outside of the home. I really needed to get away from just working at home all the time. So if you haven't seen my new studio build series, I'm dropping a link down in the description. Maybe I'll pin a comment or something. And as always, I hope you have a great day. Talk to you later.